In this video, I'll describe four attachment styles, how they develop and how they impact your relationships. And watch until the end of this video as I'll share how your attachment style can change your brain and how attachment theory developed. Let's start by looking at the secure attachment style. Now, I always think it's helpful to look at an example, so let's look at Emily. When Emily was a child, her parents were attentive, nurturing, sensitive and loving. They were responsive to her needs and she learned she could rely on her parents whenever needed. As an adult, Emily values emotional intimacy and believes in open and honest communication. She trusts her partner and feels secure in knowing that she can depend on him for support. Emily's secure attachment style also extends to her friendships. She fosters deep and meaningful connections with her friends. She is supportive and reliable, always there to lend a listening ear or a helping hand. Emily's secure attachment style enables her to form and maintain healthy relationships. She has a positive self-image and feels worthy of love and care. Her secure attachment style allows her to navigate relationships with a sense of confidence, emotional openness and trust in others. Now on the diagram, you can see that if you have a secure attachment style, you have positive thoughts about yourself and positive thoughts about others. You are comfortable with intimacy and autonomy and maintain healthy boundaries. Now, research shows that the best predictor of happiness in a relationship is a secure attachment style. 50% of the population are securely attached. Anxious attachment. As a child, Mark's parents were inconsistent and unpredictable. His parents were sometimes available and attentive, and other times they were neglectful and dismissive. As a result of this inconsistent parenting, Mark developed a fear of abandonment. So as an adult, he seeks reassurance and validation within his romantic relationships. He tends to worry about the status and security of his relationships, often overanalyzed situations and seeking excessive reassurance. Mark has a strong desire for closeness and intimacy. He also fears rejection and tends to be overly sensitive to any signs of distance or disinterest. He struggles with trusting his partner's intentions and always feels the need to test her commitment. In his friendships, Mark exhibits similar behaviours. He has a constant need for reassurance, seeks frequent contact and fears rejection. Despite his anxious attachment style, Mark genuinely desires close and secure relationships. But his fear of abandonment and need for constant reassurance creates challenges in maintaining healthy boundaries. On the diagram, you can see that if you have an anxious attachment style, you have negative thoughts about yourself and positive thoughts about others. You have a fear of abandonment and have a need for constant validation. 20% of the population have an anxious attachment style. Avoidant attachment. Rachel's parents were emotionally unavailable. They didn't provide comfort or support and were dismissive of her emotional needs. As a result, Rachel developed a strong desire for independence and self-reliance. As an adult, She's had a few romantic relationships, but she always felt suffocated by the emotional intensity and expectations of her partners. In her current romantic relationship, Rachel tends to keep her emotions guarded and avoids getting too close. She prioritises her own independence and personal space, often seeking alone time to recharge and maintain a sense of autonomy. When her partner expresses a desire for emotional closeness, Rachel feels uncomfortable and dismisses her partner's emotional needs. And when she experiences her own emotional challenges, she prefers to deal with them by herself. Rachel believes that relying on others will only lead to disappointment and loss of freedom. Despite her avoidance of emotional intimacy, Rachel still values her relationship and cares deeply for her partner. However, she struggles fully embracing emotional vulnerability and finding a balance between independence and intimacy. Rachel also has no close friends, only acquaintances. 
On the diagram, you can see that if you have an avoidant attachment style, you have a positive view of yourself and a negative view of others. You have a hard time trusting others and push people away. 25% of the population have an avoidant attachment style. Disorganised attachment. The disorganised attachment style is formed when a child is emotionally and physically dependent on someone who is also a source of distress or fear. For example, Amanda's parents were physically and emotionally abusive. As a child, she was often left home alone for days with no food while her parents were out partying and taking drugs. When her parents were actually at home, they would often yell at Amanda to stop crying and laugh at her distress. The abuse and neglect from her parents caused a deep sense of fear, confusion and disorientation. In her adult romantic relationships, Amanda experiences intense internal conflicts, often oscillating between a desire for closeness and a fear of abandonment or harm. This leads to contradictory behaviours. She pushes her partner away, but also longs for his presence. This push-pull dynamic means she alternates between moments of intense intimacy and sudden distancing. Amanda's fear of abandonment and her past trauma make it challenging for her to develop and sustain secure and trusting relationships. In friendships, she also struggles with establishing and maintaining stable connections. She has difficulty trusting her friends and moves between a stance of being overly reliant on them and then distancing herself. As you can see from the diagram, if you have a disorganised attachment style, you have negative thoughts about yourself and negative thoughts about others. You put up walls to protect yourself from getting hurt and don't trust others. Approximately 5% of the population have a disorganised attachment style. So looking at the diagram, there's only one secure attachment style and three insecure attachment styles. Attachment theory and the brain. Attachment theory has been proven in many scientific studies. It's now used in fields such as psychology, psychiatry, paediatrics and even neuroscience. Now what's really fascinating is that neuroscientists have shown that attachment can affect brain development. When a child feels safe and nurtured, their brain can develop vital pathways for higher level thinking. Secure attachment plays a significant role in the development of the frontal cortex, which governs decision-making, judgment and reasoning. By providing a secure base from which a child can explore the world, secure attachment allows for a broader range of experiences, leading to the formation of more connections in the brain. On the other hand, insecure attachment styles and traumatic stress can trigger an alarm reaction, disrupting the neurobiology of the brain and central nervous system. Individuals who have experienced trauma often exhibit impaired neural connections in the limbic system and altered levels of stress hormones. Fortunately, the human brain possesses an inherent biological capacity to form new synaptic connections between neurons. Each of us can create new patterns of neural activity through new experiences. You can replace old, even maladaptive patterns with new, more adaptive ones. It's within our ability to establish new neural circuitry, pathways and networks that enable us to relate in healthier and more resilient ways. The key is to practice secure attachment behaviours. So although you can't change your history, you can change your response to your history. Make a conscious effort to engage in secure attachment behaviour in everyday life. If you sense yourself resorting to protest behaviours like avoiding calls, seeking reassurance or making threats to leave, take a moment to identify your true needs and express them clearly. Don't blame your partner and don't play psychological games. If you have an overwhelming urge to distance yourself and just flee, let your partner know you need space and explore mutually acceptable ways to achieve that. If you continue with this new behaviour, you'll slowly begin to alter your attachment style. Now, it's likely to take some time, so be patient and keep practising. I'd also recommend you work alongside a psychological therapist. So if you're looking for a psychological therapist, I put some links in the description below this video. How did attachment theory develop? 
Attachment theory was developed by John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. Bowlby was influenced by Conrad Lorenz's study on imprinting. Now, Lorenz discovered that newly hatched goslings would follow the first moving object they saw after being born. This is known as imprinting, and this suggests that attachment is innate and programmed genetically. Bowlby's evolutionary theory of attachment suggests that children come into the world biologically programmed to form attachments, because this will help them to survive. Mary Ainsworth developed a procedure called the strange situation. Now, this is a standardised procedure that aims to evaluate the quality of a child's attachment to their caregiver. During the strange situation procedure, the child's behaviour is monitored through a one-way mirror as a caregiver and a stranger enter and exit the room. This sequence of events aims to replicate the interactions that children typically encounter in their daily lives. The situations presented vary in terms of stressfulness and a child's reactions are carefully monitored. So from the strange situation test, four aspects of the child's behaviour are observed. The amount the child explores and plays, the child's reactions to the departure of their caregiver, the child's anxiety when alone with the stranger, and the child's behaviour upon being reunited with their caregiver. So on the basis of the child's behaviour, they were categorised into three attachment styles, secure, anxious, and avoidant. The fourth category, disorganised, was added in the 1980s by Mary Main. So what's your attachment style? How did it develop? And do you need to do some work on yourself so that you move towards a secure attachment style? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, you may be interested in my video on reparenting. It will take what you've learned and make it much more powerful. Just click on the screen to view the video and I look forward to seeing you soon.